welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Gartner Orlando. It's 2025 and uh, I'm super excited to be with my very good friend, CMO of Domino Data. Thomas, welcome to the Robert Show. Thank you, thank you, Ravid. Pleasure to be again here with you uh, at this great show. Yes, it's always such a pleasure to see you at various conferences all across the globe, uh, but uh, it's always special to catch up with you at Gartner because uh, a lot of talking happens here and it's like a yearly thing that we always do as well, it feels like. So I'm excited, obviously you've been talking to a lot of prospects, customers, a lot of leaders, analysts. What have you been hearing this year? Uh, and what what's like the change that you kind of seeing in this space as well? Curious to know a little about yeah, that. Yeah, great question. So there are four trends that we see and we hear about from our customers. Yeah. The first one we've heard actually a lot about this morning in a keynote by Carly and Gareth, and it's governance. Governance is the number one challenge right now because the way enterprise have been doing it is very antiquated and enterprise are not ready to face the new technologies, the yep. new regulations, and the, the, the broader set of use cases they have in the enterprise. So mm. this is something that we're helping, actually we have a ton of conversations about. Uh, yeah. So clearly a, an important way to unlock the full value of AI and build that trust. Yep. The second trend is really related to the people, and we talk about upskilling. Uh, this is another actually trend that was highlighted this morning. Uh, it's the fact that you have a lot of actually non-data scientists who now have taught, have a learned co code, they love Python, and they want to use code actually, they want to be given the tools. You also have a set of data scientists who may have been using uh, legacy platforms like SaaS and others, and they want to be able to learn the new technology. So mm. the way we help is that in Domino, you can actually, you have a lot of enterprises who are building their onboarding programs within Domino. You can take an existing program, learn, get familiar, reuse maybe a project. So then there are two other trends uh, for which uh, we haven't heard as much actually yeah. on stage. The first one is hybrid, and that's a huge one. Yep. Right now, uh, enterprises are under pressure to mm. actually realize ROI from their big investments in AI. So they are challenging their cloud-only kind of deployment strategy. And that's also due to the fact that they have a lot of assets that are still on premises in a data center and they can't move them to the cloud. It, mm. doesn't, it doesn't fit, it would be super expensive to do. So we help because we have a hybrid architecture and we allow uh, actually pushing the workloads to where the data is especially, uh, including on premises. Sometimes this data can also not move because of regulations, data sovereignty rules, like yep. in Europe, you have a lot of these. So that's why we help enterprises really use the assets um, that they have, and then they really, uh, we help them making sure that they can um, do AI where they need to. Mm. And then the final one, which is a little bit of a back to the future actually, final yep. trend, is that in the end, open always wins. Uh, we've seen this in data science a lot, and now we see it again with the LLMs, yeah. because we see all the enterprises going towards the Mistral, the, uh, the Llamas, and others, and they run it themselves, including yeah. on-premises. Yeah. And that's a big thing. DeepSeek was actually a shock. A big example. Because yeah. it proved that you can do it very efficiently, so we've seen a really a strong trend. So all of this, using the people, having the proper governance to have the right trust, and getting uh, only their destiny and being in control of the destiny are really the, the big themes that we see in the enterprise. I love it. Uh, those are fantastic uh, insights for sure. I know for a fact where you talk to a lot of, you all have like big enterprises that you all cater to, you all have big logos out there. I'm kind of curious to learn a little about a few use cases that you can share with our audience that which are the companies you're catering to? Who are these guys? Which industries are you all catering to? So kind Absolutely. of curious. Absolutely. So the main thing in the use cases I'm going to talk about is really the notion of transformation. Yep. This is why it's so important to have strategic control of your AI. Yep. What we see as an example, life sciences is a big sector for us. We have 10 of the top 20 life sciences company. Nice. And one of the use cases, major use cases we see is called is statistical computing environment. So it sounds a bit uh, uh, abstract like this, but it's a key process to actually discover new drugs. Uh, and that's uh, an important element, critical to the success of a, of a life sciences company. Other uh, use cases, we see a lot of transformation as well in, life, in uh, financial services and insurance. I'll take insurance, claims processing, we see more and more customers actually get, go, take, taking off their, uh, their um, 
uh, getting away from their software stack and building, rebuilding these whole processes with AI models, computer vision, uh, uh, Gen AI and such, because yeah. it improves the customer experience, accelerates the processes, yep. and it allows them to innovate. I, I know there was Navy as well on the this thing, Absolutely. but that is something what you all are you know, obviously doing in the space, and that is what I wanted to also that, know That's about. the last yeah. big trend that we see is the use of yeah. AI everywhere for to have yeah. to gain this uh, this operational intelligence. Yep. So the Navy, as an example, is using Domino to create models that are deployed in these underwater drones, so these underwater drones can uh, go scan the seabed and wow. identify threats. So you see that we're, we're beyond the use cases where you have an AI assistant that like plans your vacation. It's really enterprise grade, mission critical uh, AI. And that what dri that's what drives a lot of the trends that, uh, that I mentioned earlier. I love it. I love how you all are catering to the enterprise AI space as well. And uh, with these sort of real ca use cases, it just becomes more and more you know, obviously real for the enterprise leaders to believe in something what you all are building together. So it's fantastic. Uh, I'm kind of also curious to know a little about the future. Okay. Uh, what's uh, next that is coming up uh, for you guys? How do you see the space in the next three to six months? Any thoughts there? Uh, yeah, we, we, we're seeing actually uh, a, an, a, a good uh, acceleration of the, of the maturity. The whole work about agents is fascinating. Yeah. Right now, agent is a topic of discussion. We see some customers starting to uh, uh, starting to really work on it and deploy a few things in production. But the thing to understand is that agents don't appear by magic. Agents are based on a sound architecture, and this yep. is where we see a lot of development. This is the way Gen AI is becoming mainstream, but you need to connect to your resources, you need to deploy in the right places. So we've see, we see a, a growing maturity. Governance, again, I want to come back to it. We see a lot of progress on that, yeah, uh, on that front. It. Because enterprises need to be ready for the future regulations. And very interestingly, I mentioned actually governance in the context of regulations, but a lot of the conversations we have are also about making AI better in their own terms, managing the risk and having the right guardrails to always, always improve. I love it. Uh, these are fantastic insights, uh, Thomas. One more thing, I know for a fact where we're going to meet again in two weeks. Where is that? What's happening? Well, there's a tiny event called GTC, hosted <laughs> by NVIDIA in San Jose. It's going to be, I mean, this is pretty packed. Maybe you can hear all, we have a lot of people here at Gartner. GTC is going to be another major event. It was crazy last year, a lot of innovation. 20,000 people, that is what I'm hearing. Uh, I was I, there last year, I know we spoke at GTC and it is always good to you know meet you all at GTC as well. So excited about that. Absolutely excited and excited to talk to you again and yeah. I think we'll cover, based on the context that we said, we'll talk about the needs that these enterprises have. That would be an interesting one to keep the conversation going. Absolutely. So you all can stay tuned for the part two of this conversation. Yep. Super excited to do that. Thomas, once again, thanks for sharing all the trends, uh, what's happening at Gartner, and obviously talking about the use cases as well. It is always such a pleasure chatting with you. Always a pleasure to talk Thank to you, you very much. and the community. Nice yes. to see you around. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone.